I'm fearfully, wonderfully made Imago Dei There's glory in all you create Before my conception, my home was in heaven in you. Breathe your life in my lungs. Your perfect design that you purposed in time, holy made in the image of God. Oh, I am There's glory in all you create, Imago Dei. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made, Imago Dei. There's glory. It is good, isn't it obvious? Not a coincidence. Life is your passion. It is good. No what a miracle, fully intentional. All that you fashion. It is good. Not a coincidence, life is your passion, it is good. No what a miracle, fully intentional, all that you fashion, it is good. And isn't it obvious, not a coincidence, life is your passion. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made, Imago Dei. There's glory in all you create. Hello, everybody. It is Mr. Mike. Last week, we learned about the first Reveal Something gift called Word of Knowledge, which is a supernatural knowledge about the past or present that we couldn't have known on our own. Today, we will learn about when God reveals something to us through the gift called a Word of Wisdom. 
Remember that God wants to use all of us for these gifts, but he won't use all of us in the same way. It's important to know that no one is supported is supposed to have all the gifts all the time. There was only one guy like that, and that's because he, through being 100% man, was also 100% God, and his name is Jesus. Those gifts are all for the body of Christ, for the benefit of his church. And we're not talking about the gift of wisdom, we're talking about the gift of a word of wisdom. Plain old wisdom is gained by experience or listening of really old people tell us stories, kind of like me. Um, but a word of wisdom is only given to us to, by the Spirit of God and should always point us back to Jesus. The Holy Spirit never reveals all of what's known to someone, but only of what he knows. This will make more sense as we learn more about it. Now, let's hand it on over to the memory first. What's up, Awaken Kids? Miss Shayna, again, so good to see you. All right, this month's memory verse is all about receiving gifts. So before we jump into it, I want everybody up on your feet, up on your feet. I wanna see some high energy. Let's get pumped from my boys. Can I get a boo, y'all? From my girls, can I get a boo, y'all? From my volunteers, can I get a booyah? And from my vibe team in the back, give me a booyah. Awesome. All right, everyone, sit down, sit down, settle down. Let's get into it. This month's memory verse is 1 Peter 4.10, and it goes like this. As each one of us has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the abundant grace of God. Now, repeat it after me. 1 Peter 4.10. As each one of us has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the abundant grace of God. Great job, you guys. You know how this works. Go home, rehearse it, memorize it, practice it, come back, tell your leaders, and get ready for prizes and points. Now let's kick it off to the next segment. What is up, guys? Mr. Joseph here. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 12 starts by saying we shouldn't be ignorant about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's a really good idea to learn more about them. There are different gifts, and they have different functions for the church. The reveal something gifts reveal things if that wasn't obvious enough. This one is called a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is different from just regular wisdom, like don't eat yellow snow, or put your underwear on before you put on your pants. It's something specific that the Holy Spirit reveals about a certain situation or circumstance. This gift is to reveal something about God's divine purpose. I know, I know, this stuff is really cool. The difference between the word of wisdom and a word of knowledge is this. A word of knowledge is always about the past or present, but the word of wisdom is always about the future. Yeah, now I've got your attention. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about the future, yo. All right, now listen up, because we're gonna learn yet something real quick. Acts 9, remember? Sure, God gave Ananias a word of knowledge about what street and which house to find Saul at, and that Saul was waiting for him to show up and pray for him, and these were all present knowledge. God also revealed something to Ananias about Saul, soon to be Paul's future. God also said, he is a chosen vessel to me to preach my name to Jews, Gentiles, and kings. And that is exactly what Paul did. Godly wisdom is a different thing. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives freely and he will give it. This is referring to wisdom for life. A word of wisdom is a piece of God's wisdom about the future and it always reveals a part of God's plan. Look throughout all of the Old Testament prophecies. There is the gift of a word of wisdom everywhere. God revealing a piece of his own mind, purpose, and plan. A word of wisdom, simply put, is an accurate prediction of the future that is revealed to us by God. In Genesis, Joseph received a word of wisdom through a dream God had given him. It was a dream that revealed a piece of God's purpose and plan for the future. You know how prophecies have been spoken but haven't yet happened? Yep, these are words or wisdom given to the Old Testament prophets. A prophetic word is like an uber for a word of wisdom. And you thought Uber was a new thing. 
God's been using it since the beginning. In Acts 11, some fella named Agabus prophesied that there was going to be a drought in a certain part of the world. So the people of God were able to get them supplies to survive the drought. That was a word of wisdom given by God to protect his people. In Acts 21, Agabus is dropping a word of wisdom again. He took Paul's belt and bound his own hands saying, whoever owns this belt is gonna be bound by the Jews in Jerusalem and then they're gonna hand you over to the Gentiles. That happened. It is a word from God that reveals the future. If this doesn't get you pumped up to hear from God, I don't know what will. In Paul's case, after hearing that word of wisdom, people were like, you shouldn't go, it's dangerous. But Paul was an intense dude. So he was like, you think I'm scared to get hurt, bro? I'm willing to die for the gospel. Like I said, he was intense. We can all hear from God. Just believe that the Holy Spirit can use you and see how God shows up. Say it loud and repeat after me. Holy Spirit, reveal something to me. Amen. Awesome. Welcome to the best bank in the world. How may I help? Give me all your money. Can you repeat that? I said, give me all your money. Excuse me, sir. Stealing is a sin. And is that a toy lightsaber? It's not a toy. <laughs> Eh, who cares? Anyway, I already called the breakdancing ninjas. The breakdancing pizzas? here today because of his foolish attempt to rob a bank we'll start with some questions but first let's go with you so what did you want that money for i told you i just wanted to donate some money to the poor we know that you're lying that's that's not true why did you pick that outfit to donate money to the poor you look like a bad Chose to use a toy lightsaber to do this? It's not a toy. It literally says made in China on the back. Okay, fine. I did try to take the money, and yes, the lightsaber is a toy, but I did eat the last pizza pizza too. That's where my piece of pizza went! Now we're arresting you for a whole nother reason. 